I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my I have a Oh, hello, and welcome back. Um, it's, it's very strange. At my age, the, uh, the Cold War terrors were a real thing when I was a kid, and for quite a few years after that. And it's so funny to, to open this video with a, a Russian language um, radio station. But as I've said many times before, it's the uh, closest radio station to this location. You can always pick it up, even if you've got a three-foot piece of wire for an antenna. Um, it's our local Ukrainian station, by the way. Um, so we got our voltages back, or got them to where they, they uh, needed to be, for the most, most part. Ever this schematic has um, well, every yellow mark you see here has a voltage on the schematic, uh, a reference voltage. I checked them all. They're well within uh, what I call normal, and the radio seems to be working. Now, why weren't we getting biasing voltage uh, the last time we checked in here? And it turns out that it's this guy right here, the 6T8 is a very busy tube. It has three diodes and a triode. And one of the diodes wasn't working. Uh, it tested, well, I went back and tested it again, and it was a weak tube. I should have, should have, uh, should have replaced it at that time, but I did not. So, lesson learned. I had a spare 6T8 and another set I've got here, and I've ordered yet another one to replace the one I'm throwing away. Um, so it's the 6T8. And I think this might be a good opportunity to talk about, we kind of have an idea in this radio of what all of the rest of this is doing. Um, the converter, the IF and amplifiers. Uh, the limiter, we won't get to until we talk about FM, but uh, let's talk about the 6T8 circuit here and uh, take a look at what it does for this radio. And it's a number of things. Here is the 68 in its natural habitat. Um, this tube has four functions in this radio. The first function is to do what's called AM envelope detection. It's what turns the, uh, the uh, intermediate frequency with the audio information on, on it into just straight audio. Uh, the other thing it does or the second thing it does is do FM slope detection, but we're not going to talk about FM on this video. We'll talk about FM on a separate video. Uh, so we'll ignore that part of it. The third thing it does is provide, as it says right here in the schematic, the first audio amplification. And finally, it's the source of the automatic volume or automatic gain control uh, circuit that you know about. Uh, but we'll go into more detail about how it does that. So, to understand what this is doing, speaking for myself, this is a little too busy for, for me to, particularly the schematic of this tube, it's just little dots and things going on in there that I can't see uh, or, or break apart. So what I often do is if I have a complex, to me complex circuit, uh, I will redraw it and simplify it. And uh, this is my redrawing of this chunk of uh, this radio circuit. By the way, excuse the background noise. Uh, winter has arrived here in the Pacific Northwest, and I've had to move into the, uh, the winter quarters, which means the sharing a room with a furnace in the basement. So occasionally it'll come on and make noise, and I apologize, but there it is. So here's my simplified version of the 6T8, and I've unfolded, I've unfolded, in essence, the uh, schematic for the for the 6T8 tube. 
And I confess this is not my original work. I got this off another site, which was very handy, and I'll put a link below to the location of that site. But it does a really nice job of telling us what's inside the 6T8. Uh, if we go from bottom to top, left to right, we'll see right here that there are these cathodes, one, two, three cathodes, all tied together and all tied to ground. So these have, these three elements show, uh, share a common cathode. The fourth cathode is an in independent cathode and uh, comes out of pin three here. Then across the top, the first element we see is a triode, and this is the first audio frequency amplification stage right here. The second one we see is a diode, the third one we see is a diode, and remember these two diodes share a common cathode along with the uh, triode. And finally the third diode on pin 2 has uh, its own cathode, so it it's, uh, runs independently of these other these other tube elements. So what's going on here? Um, we can start over here. The previous stage is the second IF amplifier, the 6AU6, and that feeds its output from the plate into the third IF transformer right here. I didn't put a label on it, but this is what it is. So let's put the oscilloscope right here in this area, at the top of this, this primary side of this transformer, and take a look at what's coming in from the 6AU6 uh, as we tune, uh, tune in and out of a radio station. This is the uh, plate output of the uh, 6AU6 uh, second IF amplifier. And I'll get this going here. A quick note about what's on the scope. We have AC coupling, um, pretty big volts per division, five volts per division. And a time domain where, where time per division is two milliseconds. So each one of these squares is two milliseconds long. It's a slow sweep rate. Let me back that up if I can and show you what just happened. Start this over again. And right here, what the trace is showing is um, there's no signal present. That's because I've tuned off the local radio station. And as soon as I start to tune in a radio station, you see that. And that's the IF signal with audio information sitting on top of it. So the IF frequency of 455 is being modulated by the talking voices on the radio station. Um, and because it's AC coupled, it's going both pos positive and negative. But what we see here are audio signals going positive and its mirror image going negative. So the audio is impressed on here as an AC voltage going both positive and negative for every peak. So every peak you see up here, there's an equivalent peak down here. That means the audio information in a, an AM transmission is um, duplicated. Whatever is happening on the uh, positive going part is also happening on the negative going part, which might suggest to you that you don't need both parts. Um, if you just wanted to listen to this audio, why, why can't you just listen to one part? The answer is you can. That's exactly what happens in a super hot radio, or in any radio for that matter, even on your old crystal set, uh, all you're listening to is half of it. And, and uh, now the next thing I'm gonna show you here in a second is, this is audio information so our sweep rate is very slow, but if we turn the time per division up quite a ways, we can start to see the, um, the IF. There is our 455, and it's being modulated as well, up and down by that voice uh, content. So there's someone talking here. This isn't music. There's someone talking here, and they're modulating the uh, IF frequency in amplitude, but not in frequency. So that makes it AM. So let's take the next step. What you're just looking at is the signal that's going into the primary of the third IF transformer right here. Now, 
it's inductively coupled to the secondary, and pin 5 of that IF transformer. Don't know why I noted that, but I did. Anyway, it goes over here and is connected to this first diode. And the diode is a, has, again, a common cathode tied to ground. But here's a diode. So you know what a diode does. It only passes voltage going in one direction and not in the other. And in the previous screen, you saw uh, audio information being sent both positive and negative simultaneously. And we talked for a second about how you only need half of that. That's what this diode does. This throws away the uh, upper half of the, um, the audio signal that you saw in, uh, just a minute ago. Let's take a look, look at how it looks right here on uh, this pin 5 of the uh, third IF transformer. Okay, here's what we're getting um, from the plate of that first diode. Everything that was going positive is now being clipped off. The diode is only conducting negative going signals. And you can see the audio envelope a little bit more clearly here. The setup is the same, 5 volts per division, uh, two, 1 or 2 milliseconds per sweep, can't tell which. And if you look closely, you can count how, see how big this signal is. Um, if we look at the very top of it here, whoop, go back to where it is again. If we look at the very top of it here, it's going down 5, 10, almost 15 volts at its peak. So this is a pretty hefty um, signal being generated uh, from the, uh, the third IF transformer and the top of it's being clipped off. Now when you detune, that's what happens. That whole signal goes away, you tune back in and you get audio, audio back into it. we were just looking is right here, or pin 6 of the 68 as you, as you wish, either one. Um, at this point, we've cut the, the, the positive and negative going um, IF signal, we've cut the top half off. So at, at this point right here, we're only seeing the negative going part of the uh, signal from the radio station. Now let's look down here and see what's happening right here, because this is where couple of interesting things happen that are worth looking at. And this is the the bottom of the uh, secondary and a bit of a resistor and then a filter right here, an RC filter right here that does a very interesting thing that's good for us. <laughs> here we've uh, hooked up the oscilloscope to um, the point I showed you on the schematic. This is at the bottom of the third IF transformer secondary and uh, looking right at the top of the filter section that I pointed out. And this is what's going on. And there's a change in the setup for the oscilloscope here. Voltage is the same, 5 volts per division. Uh, the time reference, time, uh, time per division is the same, 1 or 2 milliseconds. Can't tell which, looks like 1 now. The difference is right here. I've switched to DC. Now the for those of you who may not have an oscilloscope or have never used one, uh, there are two ways to put in a signal. If you're measuring a relatively small DC component of a signal, you can use the DC coupling. If you use the AC coupling, it goes through a capacitor and you don't see what DC is coming in on the probe. If you use DC coupling, it bypasses that, that capacitor and goes directly to the guts of the oscilloscope so that when this waveform is at zero volts, or it's at nearly zero volts right here, it, if it were exactly zero volts, it would be on this center line that you can see in the reticule. But it's slightly below, it's a, what, a tenth of a volt or something below, below um, or negative voltage. As you'll see here in a minute, when I turn in, tune in a radio station, um, this will start to go down meaning the voltage here will start to go more negative because remember we're only looking at the negative pulses of the uh, original IF signal. 
So we've got, this will start to go down and you'll start to see audio information here, but it'll be much cleaner and it'll be much cleaner because all of the IF, the 455, has been stripped away and sent directly to ground. It's been filtered out. Um, so let's see how that looks when we play this. There are some notches right there, some little negative spikes. That's AM noise. Uh, every radio, uh, every AM radio in the world does that. But that's just AM noise. Now I'm starting to tune in a radio station. You see the audio information is there, but now it's at about a negative 5, 10, about negative 15 volts here on center, on the center line. So you can see all the IF is gone. This is a pure audio signal going back off station again, and that line returns to, to uh, near center. So two things have happened Whoop. right there. We've gotten rid of the 455. We have a pure audio signal right here that's going to get routed to the next stage, which is the audio amplifier. Uh, the second thing that's happened is, as uh, the signal gets stronger, as you tune in more closely to the center of the, f of the frequency, this voltage drops, the DC portion of this voltage drops. And keep in mind that AC and DC can coexist and do quite happily on a wire. It doesn't have to be just AC or just DC, it can be both. In this case, it's both. In this case, it has an audio signal. And in this case, it also has our, now it has our AVC or AGC voltage. AGC, AVC control the amplification of the previous stages. If you have a very loud signal, you don't want them to amplify too much. If you have a very weak signal, you want them to amplify a lot. So that's what this AVC does. Since we have a, a good local station here, KEX, as I recall, uh, 50,000 watts or something like that. Huge, huge AM station. Um, it's a big station, so the AVC voltage will go very negative to almost fift minus 15 volts, as it, the oscilloscope reads it anyway. Um, at the same time, it's picking up more and more and more of the audio signal. So let's look at that again. Oh, that's a very weak station, I think. Yeah, this is a very weak station. So that AGC line doesn't go down in negative voltage very much. There's our big one again. There's our local station. And it's got, uh, it goes, drops in DC. The DC component drops to almost 15 volts minus. But the audio component is right there and very visible. So that's our 6T8 doing two of its functions. Number one is it's providing, um, uh, it's, disc it's, it's looking at our audio envelope and throwing away everything that's not audio. So the top half of the IF and then stripping out the, the, um, the uh, uh, IF frequencies so that we get just audio signals. And then it's because the audio is, is is uh, being amplified in a negative direction, it's also providing this AVC voltage of minus 15 in this case, about there, minus 15. So that's two of its functions. Now, let's see what the third thing it does is, and that is looking at uh, the, uh, the RF, or RF, the audio frequency as it hits the very first audio amplifier that's also in the 6T8. Let's look back a minute at our um, schematic. Um, this grid right here is the one that, that controls the action of the triode that's included in the 6T8 and makes up the first audio amplifier. So the signal leaves um, the signal again comes from the 6AU6 through the primary of the third IF, through the secondary of the third IF, gets connected to the first diode in the 68, and then gets converted into an audio only signal by this filter that sits right down in here. Um, then it goes through, and we'll cover this in a few minutes, but 
goes through this very laborious path to get back up here to this grid so they can finally be amplified and be sent onto the 6V6 power amplifier. Um, but let's go back to our simplified schematic for a minute and take a look at that. Let's see. Yeah, I can move this. So we have at this point right here, we have a purely audio signal. And, the, and there are two signals on here, remember. There's a DC voltage, which is our AVC or AGC line voltage, control voltage. And we have the pure audio. Now the DC goes rocketing off in this direction. The pure audio gets routed through this painful, <laughs> painful path and into pin 8 right here of the triode that's embedded in our 6T8. And that triode, the grid of that triode, or the triode rather, the signal hits here, it's pure audio, it gets amplified by the 6T8 triode and moves on down the pike to the 6V6 uh, for final amplification and output through the speakers. Um, so let's follow the path this takes uh, from here, well, actually from the transformer itself uh, through the rest of the circuitry and on to uh, pin 8 of the 6T8. It's a long way around, I'll tell you. Here's some more of the schematic. Um, this doesn't show the stuff that's off to the left. And uh, the only thing that we care about that's off to the left in this instance is the selector switch, the band switch. that switches between AM and FM, or the two FMs. Uh, so the, you'll have to take my word for it that the band, select, band selector is set to AM as we follow this along. Okay, let's orient ourselves. Right here is the primary of the third IF, AM section. Here's the secondary of the third IF. And remember that this point is connected up here to the plate of one of the diodes in the 6T8. Um, so the signal is, is rectified. Only the negative portions of the, of the audio uh, modulated IF frequency exists right here. It's that first negative going signal we saw. Um, the rest has been thrown away. Everything going positive has been thrown away. Down at the other end of the secondary of the third IF transformer, the signal is now containing, still has some, or still has RF in it, still has the intermediate frequency in it goes through this 47K resistor and then hits this network right here, the C3 and R, whatever it is, this 220K resistor. And what those two things do is they, they allow all the audio, the low frequency information to continue and they dump all the high frequency stuff straight to, to ground. This is a low pass filter. It passes low frequencies everything that's a high frequency and it considers 455 kilohertz a high frequency goes right through this cap and resistor to ground and at this point we no longer have any IF in the signal. What we have here is pure audio and DC. Remember we were looking at that on the oscilloscope. This becomes our AVC line which is carrying both the AVC and it's carrying the audio information. The ABC goes off to the left and is connected by various routes to all the previous amplification stages to control their gain. And we'll talk about that a, more in a bit. Um, but once it's done all that over there, the audio signal goes through the band switch selector and comes back on this line right here. Follow this around if you can. Goes through this switch. This is the uh, phono uh, radio switch. And around here, sorry, went off screen. Back up here, over here to the enter. This gob of stuff here that's all has to do with tone controls. Goes into a shielded cable, runs along the side of the chassis in its shielded cable. Goes up through here. You'll notice the schematic says the Alto button is closed. That means 
to make this go this way, you have to have the Alto button depressed, which I do in this case. Uh, goes through this RC network, there's a, a resistor and a, and a capacitor right there, that deepen the tone. They takes it a little, the alto part takes a little bit of the high frequencies out with this with this uh, low pass filter or this pass filter goes again into a shielded cable comes over to one end over volume control goes through the volume control up through the the um, the center tap of the of the volume control through this shielded cap remember we have a few episodes back we had to figure out how to shield a cap well, I've gone through the shielded cap over here and right into the grid at long last of the triode section of the 6T8. So we started here, we went all over the radio through this section, came back here and ended up in the same place. Now we've got the audio signal at the grid of the very first audio amplifier and it uh, controls what comes off the plate of the very first audio amplifier, which is right here. It's a uh, biased at 92 volts or thereabouts as you can see right there from that plate it goes over capacitively capacitively coupled to the grid of the 6v6 where it gets its final boost through the power of the audio transformer and out the speaker Whew. so that's a lot of stuff going on in there and what i always do is i take highlighters when i'm curious about how uh, these signals are going to boogie on through here and highlight a path for myself so I know what's going on and that also lets me ignore everything that's not really important <coughs> relative to that. Um, so now, what have we done? The 68, we've used the 68 to demodulate, well, to detect the envelope of the audio signal in the IF. We've gotten rid of the IF with this little RC filter right here. We have pure audio coming down here, and because we're using the negative going signal, uh, we can create a negative voltage for our AVC or AGC line. So now we have some control over the previous stages. If we get a big signal in here, we can apply the big negative voltage to the AVC line, and that will dampen down the amplification on the prior stages. And then finally, we route the audio back over here. By this time, it no longer has any DC information on it. Uh, audio comes through here, hits the grid, gets amplified as pure audio for the first time, out the plate, then out the 6V6. So as I said, that's a very busy, busy circuit. Um, I guess I want to say one more thing about all of this, and that has to do with um, the AVC line. What is that AVC line really performing for us? And I need to get a drawing of a tube up, uh, just a simple tube, for us to see what that looks like. So let me do that. Here's a um, here's a triode. <laughs> uh, as the tag says, no filament shown at all. And yeah, there's no filament shown at all, so you ignore that. How does a triode work? Well, the cathode gets hot either directly or indirectly, gets hot, boils off a whole bunch of electrons. The plate itself up here is set to a very high voltage, 150 to 350 volts. And because the cathode is at near ground, all of those electrons want to go that way. So they go scooting off the cathode and flood into the plate. The plate is sucking them up as fast as it can. And that's how a tube works. If you put it, and that's how a diode works, actually. The, any diode works exactly the same way. When, uh, when it's getting a positive signal, the electrons flow this way. When it's getting a ne negative signal, nothing happens because electrons can't flow from the plate to the cathode. They can only go from the cathode to the plate. So we've got electrons going from the cathode to the plate. We ins insert a grid, a control grid, and by the way, the control grid is always, the, almost always the control grid. Uh, this tube could have five grids in there and there'd still be one of them that is the control grid. And that's the one that controls the amount of amplification that this tube is able to provide. 
Now the cathode is very near ground usually. Sometimes it's grounded directly. Sometimes it has a very low value resistor rate here and a capacitor bipod, uh, capa uh, cathode bypass cap. Um, but it's not, you know, I measured a couple of them in the 6AU6s, for example. The cathode has a, a uh, resistor and a bypass cap, uh, and it's about 0.7 volts above ground. The grid is, if it just floated like this, this tube would do its maximum amplification because the grid would not inhibit electrons flowing from the cathode to the plate. As soon as you start to put a negative voltage, a minus voltage on the, on the grid, the grid starts to interfere with the number of electrons that can go through here. The more negative this goes, the greater the interference and the less amplification the tube is able to do. So if you control the DC voltage, and again, DC and AC can coexist, so you can control the DC voltage on this, on this uh, grid right here and make it go way negative relative to the cathode, the tube will in essence stop amplifying. So you control that up, you control the amplification of the tube by moving the DC voltage on the cathode up and down. Meanwhile, the cathode can have all kind of information coming in, audio information, for example. And it just means that that audio information, if the DC voltage is lowered here and it goes more negative really with respect to the cathode, the amplification is much, much less. So a triode's capable of a lot of amplification until you start monkeying around with the DC level of the grid and lower that to below the cathode. You can lower it so far that it won't stop working. So what happens with our AVC signal from, from the uh, 68 circuit is that when we get a really big signal coming through the whole system, that AVC is fed back to all of these previous tubes, like the 6AU6s, the 6BA6, 6BE, or the uh, 6BA6 uh, uh, RF amplifier, and it, it applies a large negative voltage to the grid of each one of those tubes and tells them to not amplify so much, if you please. Likewise, if you're tuning in a very low signal, that you need all the amplification you can get from the prior stages. The AVC DC voltage goes up to about zero and gives the tube the opportunity to do as big an amplification as it possibly can. So that's what AVC AGC does, is it controls the biasing, the grid bias of each tube prior to the 68 in this circuit. Um, so I think that's it for this video probably more than enough. I probably confused uh, most everybody enough to call it a day. So I think I'll call it a day. You guys take care and I'll see you next time. We'll talk about something more interesting like FM. <laughs> see you next time. Bye-bye.